So this is another section of SER 321 Principles of Distributed Software Systems. And today I'd like to talk about um, on the detailed schedule. If we look down at section number seven, JSON RPC, JSON Remote Procedure Call. Um, readings uh, for this one, we'll take a look at them in a minute. Uh, there's nothing in either of the recommended textbooks for the course uh, for these, uh, but in fact, there's good stuff. Um, there's a, a website for JSON RPC, and the Wikipedia page actually, actually for JSON RPC uh, is very good as well, right? RPC, Remote Procedure Call. Uh, and I've also included on the uh, Unit 7 API documentation, um, actually that'll be useful for earlier units as well, um, uh, but there is also a lab exercise, uh, and that is uh, JSON RPC server in C++. So this is assignment number five. Um, take heart, uh, this one and one more. Um, and this one we're going to be doing uh, our remote procedure call between a C++ client and a C++ server JSON, using JSON RPC. Um, I think once you get your head around it, you'll see that it actually is a fairly straightforward process. Um, it's not a lot more difficult, frankly, than using uh, RMI. Um, the one difference is that um, uh, if that's okay, because I showed you with RMI how to create the stub and the skeleton. Uh, with JSON RPC, we call those proxies. So uh, here also uh, are um, links to the API documentation, the Java API, which you don't really need for this one, um, but we'll, you will see you'll need it in the future. Uh, and also for the C++, JSON CPP. Uh, so here are the different classes. Uh, by now you should probably be familiar with the JSON value class, uh, which is the most commonly used one. Um, as well, but here are the documentation uh, documentation for those together. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, the last one is for JSON RPC. And um, this one, are, this is Doxygen generated. Um, you can actually go into your build directory when you built uh, JSON RPC CPP. Uh, if you go into the build directory and just do make uh, docs, or just, I think it's make doc, um, one or the other, uh, it'll actually generate these HTML documents for you in a subdirectory of the build directory. Um, or you can get them by just downloading uh, this uh, tar file, uh, tar archive of the API docs. And I'm not going to do it. I've already got it. Okay, so let's go back uh, to uh, look at... at um, the uh, JSON RPC, uh, this won't spend too much time on this one. Uh, but this, uh, if you're having any problems with it, in fact, there's a specification here. Uh, there's an about page. The uh, about is actually um, uh, not overly um, full of information about how to use it. Uh, or even actually for that matter what it is, although the references actually show you where it is. The specification uh, is actually more detailed and indicates to you the total details of, of what can and should happen when using JSON RPC. Um, <clears throat> there's two different ways to use JSON RPC. One of them is over the HTTP protocol uh, and the other is by direct TCP IP connection. And we're actually going to use the HTTP. Um, that's the one, at least anyways, that's the one that I've uh, shown in the example that I'll be showing you. Uh, and um, now here is, here's the message, uh, message format. Uh, but let's go ahead and go back, leave that to you to peruse. Um, well, let's look at the Wikipedia page, maybe. So the Wikipedia page uh, gives you some history uh, behind JSON RPC, uh, and uh, it also gives you uh, some uh, very good simple examples. So JSON RPC is nothing more than a remote procedure call, where uh, what we do is wrap up the procedure call and the result in a special JSON message, um, a JSON object is the right way to put it. 
So remember, a JSON object is kind of like a hash map or a hash table in Java. Uh, and in that, we have keys. All the keys are strings, always strings. And the values are JSON objects. So as a JSON object, it can be curly brace, right? A, uh, another a subnested hash map, if you will. Uh, or it can be an array, square brackets. Uh, or it can be a, uh, a number, uh, a double, or um, an integer. Uh, or it can be a string. Or it can also be a Boolean true or false value. So uh, there are two different versions. Uh, we're actually using version 2. Uh, not a lot of difference between version one and version two, but let's go ahead and go to version two anyway. So here is version two, uh, and you can see here, this is actually identical to what we're going to do in the example. In version two, um, the form of a call to a JSON RPC method, um, as I mentioned, is as a JSON RPC or JSON uh, JSON object, uh, and that object uh, has uh, one key, one element whose key is JSON RPC, another element whose key is method, another element whose key is parameters, and then the final element um, is a key whose key is ID. So ID is always an integer number, and the intent is uh, to have a unique integer number for every client, um, every request from a given client. Right? So that doesn't mean that all clients have to send across a unique ID, uh, but when this, the server should be able to distinguish, um, suppose that the server gets two requests from the same client uh, nearly simultaneously before it can respond uh, to the first one, gets a second request before it can respond to the first one, then it should be able to distinguish uh, by different IDs which result belongs to which request. So you would not want to send two requests from the same client with the same ID. Um, OK, so JSON RPC, this is just the version number. Uh, and we're going to use version 2.0. And then the method <clears throat> is a string which names the method. So in this case, we're going to take a look at an example of a calculator service. And the calculator service is going to have add, subtract, multiply, and divide as the methods. And the parameters are going to be two numbers. Um, and the parameters, the value of the PARMS key, is an array, a JSON array. And it has, uh, for each of the methods we're going to look at anyway, two, uh, two values in the array, which are both numbers. Now, that doesn't mean that, so for example, I'm asking you to do a, a media library. Uh, so you'll probably have a method named uh, um, get, uh, and it may only have a single parameter, which would be a string. So there would be an array here and a string. Uh, that would be the, the, um, uh, the parameter for the get method. Uh, and uh, there will be an add method, uh, maybe more appropriately, an, an add method. So you'd have a, a method named add. And the PARMS uh, for an, an add method would be a, the JSON of a media description. Uh, so it would be an, uh, an array whose only element was a JSON object, curly brace, um, meaning a hash map of all of the things that make up a, a media description. All right, so uh, this provides a reasonably concise um, mechanism to convey um, method calls from a client to a server. Um, so I don't know that I really need to say any more about it than that. If you take a look at this website, actually, uh, there are several references to different implementations. Uh, here's the one we're using, Live JSON RPC CPP. Um, and uh, there are others um, in, in several different languages as well. OK, let's go back and uh, let's actually uh, go to the assignment page. <clears throat> the assignment page uh, has uh, a, a couple of different examples. Uh, the group JSON uh, jar, we actually already looked at the group JSON jar. I didn't uh, read the, um, uh, the code for it, go through the code for it in a video. 
but in order to have completed the prior assignment, you would have had to uh, do that. I'm going to uh, go through the Calculate Live JSON RPC. Uh, and this will show you by going through both the build.xml, uh, the source code for the C++ client and C++ um, server, uh, as well as the um, uh, there's a there's a file that the stubs get generated from uh, uh, the JSON description of the methods. Uh, in in fact, that should show you uh, how to go about doing uh, this particular assignment. Uh, in the next uh, next section, we're going to take a look at uh, GUIdemo.jar, uh, which has both a C++ and a uh, Java uh, user interface, C++ in FLTK, and Java uh, using uh, Java Swing. And we'll go through these examples uh, that are in uh, this jar, and we'll also take a look at the, um, we'll be going through the clients some sample uh, clients that you can use uh, for this assignment as well. Um, that doesn't mean you can't get started on it before uh, the next unit. Uh, in fact, um, you can use the uh, exact same main method in the client here, right? Without a user interface, uh, you can, and it's a better way to approach it, do a, a server and a client for media um, with a command line uh, client and then take the result, uh, once you get that working, then take the result and integrate it into a GUI. That's why they're uh, kind of separated as different units um, of material they're going to be looking at. All right, so now I'm going to go to LX Terminal and uh, let's see if I've got them here. Yeah, I do have, uh, there's the calculate uh, live JSON RPC. So jar XF, let's extract it and change to that directory. Uh, now, when you get into this directory, you'll see that there is quite a bit more stuff here than uh, in the other projects that we've done before. And I'll spend a little bit of time talking about it. Uh, the readme.txt file, I hope is helpful beyond this video to help you figure out how to use it. Um, but there are also, um, I probably shouldn't have left the OSX uh, compiled commands in here, but they are there also. Uh, one of the more important ones, uh, files, is the calculate.json. Calculate.json uh, is the template for describing the methods, and it's a JSON file. It's a JSON object, actually, um, that describes each of the different methods uh, that the server is to implement and the clients are uh, to be able to call, uh, it generates stubs just like RMI, Java, remember Java remote method invocation, uh, RMI has a stub on the client side and a skeleton on the server side. Well, JSON RPC calls them both stubs, but they're the same thing um, as uh, we saw in RMI. And you'll see how they get generated. Um, there's a program that came with JSON RPC that comes with JSON RPC. Um, in, in order to, uh, in order to uh, generate the stub and uh, on both sides, a client and server stub. There are also uh, some samples. So uh, curl, I think I uh, already has, have gone through an example of using curl, uh, but here is a curl command. So you can actually implement your server and then see whether or not it works. Uh, if you cat sample uh, curl command, for an add, um, this is a curl command that you could copy and paste into the command line once the server is up. In this case, it's calling the method uh, plus and passing 25 point or 2515.3 and 484.7 uh, to do addition, um, and it's going to localhost uh, 8080. Uh, so, in, so in fact, uh, before even getting your client to work. Uh, once you get your server up and running, you can exercise it with curl commands. Uh, since we're using RPC uh, for H using HTTP protocol for doing our uh, JSON RPC calls. All right, so let's um, actually before we start reading any code or anything else, let's go ahead and get it running. And in order to get it running, we're just going to do it as an example. Uh, you, have, you should um, you have to for maximum points. Um, uh, turn in your solution to this problem 
where the client is running on Debian Linux and the server is running on Raspberry Pi. Uh, but for development purposes, I strongly recommend that you do all of the development uh, with the server and the client both running on your uh, Debian Linux system. Uh, so in order to uh, demonstrate it, I'm going to demonstrate it uh, from that perspective. Uh, I think it'll help. No, I didn't want to do that. How'd that happen? Well, there you are. Let's see, we were just one, one more is an option. So let's do ant. There are a bunch of targets in this one because there are several steps uh, to get the client and the server to build and to run. Um, generate server stub, build server, generate client stub, build client. Uh, and then there's actually also a Java client here. The Java client, um, don't mess around with until you get to the next exercise, uh, um, uh, assignment six. So uh, this shows you how to execute the server. Uh, dot slash bin calculate RPC server 8080 and how to execute the client. So let's just go ahead and execute it uh, and uh, ant um, build. I thought there's a build.all, but I don't see it. Build.server. So the steps uh, that um, ant goes through in order to build the server. Um, first are to prepare, uh, which makes the appropriate directories. It makes a bin directory where the CPP, uh, C++ executable files are going to go. It makes two object directories, one for the client, or this is where the .os go, um, one for the client, one for the server, uh, and then uh, the echo stuff you can forget, uh, generate server stub. Um, so it actually... Uh, uh, calls the, uh, the program, uh, actually this program came with JSON, live JSON's uh, CP, RPC CPP um, uh, in the bin directory in user local. You'll find that uh, user local bin, you'll find that program. Uh, and then, uh, then after generating the stub, the name of it is calculate server stub.h, uh, it then compiles and links uh, the server. Uh, okay, so uh, it goes without saying, well, it doesn't go without saying, nothing goes without saying. Uh, in order to execute this example, uh, you have to have done uh, at, sudo apt-get install um, live json cpp dash dev. That's part of, it's in the um, resources page. Uh, actually, it has to be both on, uh, on the client and the server. Uh, and in addition to that, you also have to have built um, meaning um, uh, cmake uh, space dot dot and then c or then make uh, live json rpc uh, dash cpp uh, and those uh, instructions are also on the uh, resources web page as well. Uh, but once you have made actually doing actually have, on that one after you do the make you have to do a, a sudo uh, make install to get it installed on the system and then LD config in order to get it all to all to work properly. As I said, those instructions are on the website. Okay, so now I have um, built the server and linked the server. I can go back and do uh, what it set up here, uh, which is um, that. Let's go ahead and copy and paste it so I don't have to type. So now I have a server up and listening on port 8080. I'm going to go over to the other um, LX terminal and I'm going to do ant build.client. So we have again uh, generated another stub uh, and this stub is, uh, doesn't say calculate server stub. This one is calculate stub.h. So this is the client side stub. So this is the client's interface to the server, and they are implemented in terms of doing an HTTP uh, post, or I'm sorry, an HTTP get. 
uh, from the client to the server, and then the server uh, returns a result. Uh, we can use HTTP. HTTP is a text-based protocol. Um, so we do an HTTP GET and we add to uh, the, we add make the data on that HTTP GET be the JSON of that method call, uh, and uh, and then it responds uh, back to the client uh, and attaches the resulting um, uh, RPC excuse me yeah, uh, JSON RPC uh, return value. I don't know if I even looked at that. Did I say anything about that? Probably didn't. So uh, when we looked at this example, where's the plus example? There, the subtract example. Um, so when the client sends to the server, that's what this uh, dash dash uh, greater than means. The client sends to the server this um, JSON message that says, do a subtract and subtract uh, 23 from 42. Um, the server is going to respond with another JSON object, which is JSON RPC 2.0. Uh, and then a key for result, and then the, the corresponding value. Uh, so again, with the media library, when you do a get of a, of a string name, it would return as a result, instead of a 19 here, it'd be curly brace, uh, end curly brace, which would be a media description object. Uh, so the server sends back to the client a JSON object, which it can then deserialize and back into makeup, in this case, the only thing we really need to deserialize is the result, De deserialize it in this case to a media description object. Uh, okay, back to getting this thing to run, the client to run. Uh, so now I've created the client, and if I just do ant, I get to show you the. Uh, so here is the command line to invoke the client, Edit, copy, uh, and just to show you that the bin directory now contains both calculate RP, RPC client and calculate RPC server. So let's uh, paste and run it. Uh, so this is command line. Uh, and uh, what you do in this is enter uh, one of these symbols, plus, minus, star, or slash, followed by two doubles. Uh, and that will invoke the appropriate. Um, so then uh, that command line gets read in. Uh, and the program decodes it to say this is supposed to be a subtract of 23 and 5, uh, builds the, um, uh, actually calls the stub, the appropriate method in the stub in order to get it, uh, in order to get the server to do the calculation. Yeah, pretty, not exactly a, um, a conventional way to do additions, multipl multiplications, divisions, and subtractions. Um, generally, you don't need a client server application to do that, but it works. Um, so 34.5, let's add together 34.5 and 50, um, enter that, and uh, two things to point out, and we don't even need to go any further. So the client says 34.5 plus 50 is 84.5, uh, and asks me to enter another um, operation to be performed, and you can see that it actually was uh, calculated by the server. Uh, it says requested 34.5 plus 50, returning 84.5. Uh, so, so in fact, uh, slash of um, 3.5 uh, by 20. And you can see that uh, 0 0.175, if we divide um, 20 by, um, I'm sorry, 3.5 by 20, uh, we get 0 0.175. So end uh, to get out of it. And now let's uh, just finish by looking at the code. Uh, we don't really need to spend a lot of time on this, but I do want to point out uh, the key points to it. Um, and in particular, uh, we want to look at build.xml file first. And our build.xml file has lots of different targets. Um, the couple things I want to point out here. First uh, is Mac. In the preparer, no, maybe I'm wrong. Wrong one. In the, the prepare um, target for this example is actually fairly extensive because instead of me developing it on 
uh, Debian Linux. I developed it on the Mac. And uh, the installation of the different packages on the Mac are in different locations than they are uh, on uh, Debian Linux. Uh, so I had to define some uh, properties that, uh, depending, that had different values depending upon whether I'm running on Linux or running on a Mac. And actually down here, you'll see what those values are. So I just, uh, when, when the build host is a Mac, uh, then I set the property include path to the appropriate paths for a Mac and the library uh, path as well. And then if the uh, host is Linux, uh, then you can see um, it's here. As far as I'm concerned, you, uh, you don't have to hand in something that builds on a Mac. Uh, you can just leave this the way that it is if you want to uh, and not, uh, but when you go, if you have to change any libraries, you really shouldn't have to, uh, to build upon either the Raspberry Pi or upon the Linux. Um, if you don't change uh, any of these properties, um, then it should just work just fine. Uh, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, because in fact, the libraries that you need, JSON CPP, JSON RPC, PP, CPP server, and uh, micro HTTP, the comments and so forth, in order to use, uh, there's actually a uh, config um, that you can use uh, to do the compiles, uh, but um, then you don't end up with the same, you don't end up using CPP tasks um, in order to do that in Ant, so I just thought I'd do it this way. Um, and it works just fine, and it shouldn't be any problem for you in terms of uh, generating your solution. Uh, so before I can do uh, the compile, uh, what Java client's doing in here, but in between them, um, but uh, before you do the compile, uh, so build client depends upon generate the client stub, and generate client stub, uh, it does exec, of the JSON RPC uh, stub, passing it uh, the parameter dash CPP client, uh, gives it the name of the client, uh, and then there's a JSON file name um, that is the uh, file that contains uh, the description of the different methods. So it generates for us the file calculate stub.h uh, that gets placed uh, by this copy into the client's directory. And that um, uh, defines the methods that you can call from the client program. So you'll see the client program is very simple. Uh, it just calls add methods that it gets from this client stub, this calculate, uh, calculate stub, and it gets it by virtue of extending um, this class. Uh, so then after, after generating the stub, uh, then uh, we can go ahead and compile. It's down here. Um, we can actually do the uh, CPP tasks, CC, uh, to compile the client. Right? So some of the stuff you'll have to change for the file names in your server and your client, um, uh, by, uh, but you can use the exact same build.xml file for it. So let's take a look next at that, uh, the file that gets used by the generate client stub. Right? And that is in the base directory, the project base directory. It's called calculate.json, uh, and it is an array, a JSON array, uh, where each element of the array is a JSON object, and each JSON object has a method key, a parms key, and a returns key. Um, and they tell uh, the stub generator uh, essentially the signature of the methods. So there is one method called service information, it doesn't take any parameters, right? The, uh, the array of parameters, if it has zero arguments, or it has zero elements in the array, then it says there's no parameters. Here's an example of the plus, and you can see its parms has two elements, which means there are two parameters. Um, what the stub generator does is to read this array, uh, looks at the first element, says what's the type of this first element, so then it knows the signature <clears throat> it doesn't matter the value of three or four or whatever, as long as it's a number, so that it knows that it's going to take a, a number, in this case, a, a, a use a double number. Um, and then the return value indicates the type that's going to be returned. Uh, so in each of these cases, uh, they're, they're fairly simple for the calculator, right? Plus, minus, 
times and divide, uh, they could actually be exactly the same with just different names for the method. Um, but um, it ignores it and it just looks at the type of each of these operations. So um, what you'll end up doing to solve uh, problem number five is to create a media.json, uh, which will be an array and it will contain a JSON object that describes each of the different methods that are in your JSON or your media library. So you'll have an object for get, you'll have an object for add, an object for remove, an object for uh, get titles, an object for get music titles, and an object for get uh, video titles. Uh, and, and put that into, call it media.json, uh, and then make sure that the build.xml file reads it in in order to generate the stubs. Okay, so now let's take a look at the code. The code actually uh, is uh, very, very straightforward, I think, um, from my perspective. Uh, this calculate stub.h is generated by the um, stub generator, right? And calculate client.cpp is a command line client. Um, the, really the interesting thing about it down here in the main, so split uh, actually breaks the command line into uh, components. Uh, it's actually more C than C++ uh, just because of me. Um, HTTP client, this is one of the classes that it's provided by JSON RPC CPP uh, and calculate stub, right? So it creates a calculate stub HTTP client uh, and and uh, that CC is the object that all of the methods get called against. So notice if you're not overly uh, comfortable with C++ yet, since I created uh, this calculate stub object as what's called an automatic storage class, meaning that it goes onto the stack instead of on the heap, it's not a pointer to it, it actually exists on the stack then I um, access its methods uh, and any, anything else that's public in it by a dot, cc dot, right? And whenever we have a star, uh, so if we'd made calculate stub star cc equals a new uh, calculate stub uh, of HTTP client, then in fact, this would have to be the arrow um, in order to uh, find its uh, minus plus and so forth. So this uh, actually does the uh, calls to it. And now let's take a quick look at the uh, server. Uh, source code for the server. Again, we have, in this case, a cal calculate server stub. The server stub is, stub is different from the client stub. I'll let you take a look at it. The server stub, actually, I guess I should uh, show you. It's a kind of a pain to read, but down at the bottom are virtual methods defined in this class. And you must, excuse me, your server must implement these virtual methods with the exact same signatures that it generates for those virtual methods, right? So we, uh, you will find in my server a method that returns a double. And the name of the method is plus, and it takes uh, two doubles, parm1 and parm2. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, calculate server CPP. And that's all that it uh, all that it is. Oh, I guess the other thing I should point out: it extends. I think I said the client extends, but it doesn't. The client does not extend the stub. The server extends the stub. So my calculate server class extends the calculate server stub, and and um, uh, the um, virtual methods are actually implemented down here calculate server, so this is essentially the .h for it, um, calculate server plus takes a double, uh, takes two doubles, and returns a double, uh, and uh, the value that it returns is just add the two parameters together, All right? So the code that goes into this uh, is the exact same code that's in your media library implementation. So in your media library implementation, you have an add method. You can uh, quite, you should be able to take the code out of your add method uh, for your media library and put it into the uh, CPP server for the media RPC server. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to show you? I don't think so. Uh, well, we could do, um, let's get out of you. Uh, 
Um, And I could actually show you the curl. Edit copy and edit paste. And this actually shows you. Um, so what I just did, there's a file. I mentioned this earlier in the in the video. There's a file called sample curl command add sh. Uh, it's a shell command. I could actually execute it as a shell command, but I just copied and pasted it into the command line. Curl is a, um, uh, an auxiliary command that's available. I think uh, came by default, or we actually did it by sudo apt-get install to install curl. Uh, it will go to a web page and get the results of that web page. So it is sending to localhost 8080 our, uh, 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 cur our JSON uh, RPC request. Uh, and then it shows you the result that it gets back. It prints the result that comes back from the server. Uh, ID 3, JSON RPC 2.0, and the result is 3,000. Uh, and you can see that's the result of 2515.3 plus 484.7. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. So again, uh, this section has been the section on... Um, Section number seven on JSON RPC remote procedure call. Uh, we talked about the Wikipedia page um, that has JSON RPC defined. Uh, we looked at the JSON RPC website. Um, I pointed out that in fact the API um, uh, API documentation for in particular uh, the CPP JSON CPP and JSON RPC CPP are linked from this page. There's also a tar archive in case you want to have them uh, local to your own file system. Uh, and then this is the lab exercise. Very good. So the next time there'll be a, a short video that'll look at FLTK um, and, and look at the sample uh, GUI. Uh, it'll actually provide you with the GUI that you can use if you want to. You can create your own if you prefer, uh, but it'll provide the GUI for this assignment. Uh, and we'll go through using FLTK and MVC model view control uh, from the perspective of the um, uh, GUI uh, uh, toolkit that we're using for C++.